denominator in order to cancel out those denominators. So right now is a point where you're getting rid of denominators. Let's do it. Does anything simplify in the first one? Yeah. It has to, right? We use the LCD. So the three's gone. What does a nine become? Three. Perfect. What happens here? Okay. What happens here? Anything? No. Okay. What happens here? Good. So those nines are completely gone. Do me a favor. Okay. This is this is going to save your life. I promise. Well, it's going to save you time, which technically saves your life, right? So I'm saving your life here. Rewrite this problem before you go any further. Just rewrite what you have left. And trust me, it's going to save you, and I'll, sh I'll show you why. I'll show you why. Watch. Just watch me first before you write anything down. Of course, we still have a 3, and we have an x minus 1. Notice how we needed parentheses around that. Do you see it? If you don't have parentheses around that, is 3x minus 1 correct? No. No, because you're going to have to distribute that. Plus, the 3 times 2, yeah, you can do that. That's going to be 6. Equals, well, we are going to have the 9x. But watch what happens here. If you wrote this, you have this problem wrong. Your answer is going to be off. Do you see why it's going to be off? This, this minus right there, because this was a fraction, it was implied parentheses. That's how fractions work. It's implied parentheses on numerator and denominator. So this negative is actually going to distribute to both terms. That's why we had to have those parentheses there. This is going to end up being a minus 3. A lot of people on their homework, they give me plus 3. And the only thing I look for in your test, honestly, what I look for in your test, I'm going to look at this step and the final answer. If you have this step wrong, I know you don't know what you're doing. I just cross this problem. Right? If I see this step is right, and I see that the final answer is wrong, I know that you have the mathematics right. You just made some sort of calculation error. I give you partial credit. Do you see the difference there? You have to really follow this step down. You have to understand that this is implied parentheses, and this is going to distribute and change those signs. Now, you have your with me on this. That's a, would you see why parentheses are important now? Okay. So we're going to rewrite this. That way we have everything set. We still need those parentheses. Now the next step, now we can distribute. Now we can see that if we can solve this problem. So the next step, we'll distribute and get our what? 3x. Mm -hmm. Good. We still have the plus 6. On the right-hand side, we get 9x. What's the rest of it going to be? Great. That negative, it's like a negative 1 minus 2x. And minus 3. Hey, we're on a roll. Keep going. What's the next thing we do? Some in the middle here. Some in the middle, what do we do? Like terms. Okay. Like terms on the left, what are we going to get when we combine those? 3x plus 3. Perfect. On the right hand side, I'm seeing a couple like terms, the 9x, the minus 2x. That's going to give me 7x minus 3. Okay, I have a question for you. We've simplified, we have both sides that look great. There's no fractions. We've combined like terms, there's no more parentheses. The question is do I have to get everything to one side and zero on the other side, or can I solve this directly like it is? The only time you ever get everything to one side is if you have a power 2 or higher. It's the only time. Okay? If it's just x and x, hey, that goes back to our first steps. Get rid of the smaller variable, and then it's really easy. It's not bad. So we're going to look for the smaller variable here. It happens to be 3x. We'll get 3 equals 4x minus 3. You remember doing this from the first day, I hope. And then it's not so bad to solve. We can add 3 to both sides. We'll get 6 equals 4x. Last step, of course, is always to divide. If there's a number in front of x, so we'll divide by 4. How much is x going to equal? 3 halves. Yeah, 6 4, so we're going to reduce that. We're going to simplify that to 3 halves. That's as good as we can do on this problem. That's it. I, I do got lost. On the purple, 3x equals 3 halves. How you got to that? We combined minus 3 uh, and okay. 6. Just remember, you combine like terms, you're circling the number with the sign, and you use an addition rule to combine those. So different signs subtract, sign a bigger number that becomes a plus 3. That's a good question. Thank you for that. Any other questions? That was good. Yeah. So at the bottom, you move that 3, not the one on the other side of the, on the left side of the equal sign. This one? No, down that. Yeah. This one. 
Yeah, you move that. Right, because at this point, we're trying to isolate the X. Okay. You look where the X is, get everything away from there, okay? Right now, the X is on the right-hand side. You can't get rid of the 4 first. This 3, we certainly don't want to move that one because it's going to come over here. We've got this equal to 0, and then we have to subtract it anyway, or add it anyway. So we're going to add the 3 to both sides and then divide. So once you get down to just the variable X by itself, try to get everything away from that. Good questions. Okay, let's move on. Let's try a couple more like this, and then we'll call it a day. In fact, you know what? I'd like you to do the first step here, maybe the first two steps. And then I'm going to pause you and we'll do the first two steps together. But I want to make sure you can do it. So if you would, go ahead and do the first two steps. Remember, we're trying to get rid of fractions using the LCD and then simplify both sides. That's what I want you to do now. I'll give you about a minute or so. Good, lots of good work. Hopefully you found your LCD and used that to get rid of your fractions. That would be a good start. Hey, by the way, what is your LCD in this case? Oh, no. Awesome. So when we go through, I don't really need to see the multiplying each side, but I want to see multiplying each term because that, that does mean both sides. So as long as you're doing that, you're fine. So here, I know i got to multiply this one by 12, and this one by 12, and this one by 12. Right? Okay. That's all? Yeah. What else? Oh, good. Yeah, two things I'm missing here. One, parentheses. I don't need it around one, but I do need it around this x plus 3, and I'm definitely going to need it around this x minus 2. Otherwise, your sign is not going to change in the second part of that, the second term, and you're going to be off by, I don't know how much, but you're going to be off. Because that right there is going to affect you. All right, so that's great. Also, there's, there's one more thing that's wrong up here. What's wrong? That's okay. It doesn't just mean multiply the LCD by all the fractions. It means multiply the LCD by all the terms. No matter what they are, you multiply it by that. So out here, we also need that 12. So now we're going we're gonna to do me the favor here, and we're going to write this again, just simplified. So the 12s are gone, this becomes a 3, this becomes a 3, and we're going to rewrite it. So we have our 12x, we have our minus, don't forget about those parentheses, x minus 2 equals, on the right hand side we still have this 3, don't forget about that 3 right there, we have the x plus 3. And at the very end, we have our 3 times 1, which is giving us 3. By show of hands, how many people made it that far? Oh, that's great. That's very good. What now? Okay. Yeah, we're going to start that simplification process. We'll get our 12x. That minus, or that negative, if you want to consider it a negative 1, distributes to both terms, making this minus x and plus 2. I'll tell you what. Everybody would get this part right. Everybody. But if you forget your parentheses, I know that one's going to be wrong. Okay, that's, that's what happens here. It's this one that's important. Okay, on the right-hand side, we'll get our 3x plus 9, and then plus 3. 
Just a couple more things we have to do. We'll combine some like terms and then we'll have a simple equation. Are there any power twos, by the way? Mm -hmm. So are we going to have to set everything to one side? No. no we're, it's going to be real similar to this. We'll get rid of the smaller variable. Power two, one side, equal to zero. Use zero product property when you factor. If it's not like that, get rid of the smaller variable. So there's two options. Well, not options. There's two cases there. So here we'll have our 11x plus 2. We'll have our 3x plus 12. Not so bad after that. What's the smaller variable in this case? So we'll subtract that from both sides. We'll have 8x plus 2 equals 12. Almost done. We're just going to get rid of the constant term first, then divide by 8. So we're getting everything away from our x. Last step, let's divide by 8. What is that, 5 fourths? Yeah. Perfect. Hey, how many feel, people feel pretty good about what we've just done so far? Good. So we have actually conquered a lot of material uh, in the past three days. We learned how basic equations we're going to do that. We've learned how to eliminate fractions from equations. If you've never seen that before, that's a pretty cool thing. I mean, you never deal with fractions and equations anymore. Awesome. We learned why. Uh, we learned how to factor and now use that in equations. We're going to do maybe two more examples, one together, one on your own, and then we'll be done with our section. We'll move on into C.3, talk a little bit about graphing. That should wrap up our day. Tell me what you know about this, this problem. Tell me a couple things about it. The square is important. We, we know the square is important. That means eventually we're going to get everything to one side. Tell me another thing you see about this problem. Fraction. Can we get rid of fractions in this case? No. What's there that tells you you can or you can't? If there's an equal sign, you can get rid of fractions. If there's no equal sign, then you cannot. Am I be, being clear on that one? So since there's an equal sign, we can get rid of that fraction. There's also one more thing we can do. If you don't like the way this looks, it's 5 halves x. You can make it, if you like, 5x over 2. They're, they're exactly the same mathematically. Um, now, if that was already equal to 0, yeah. would the, would, would the uh, get rid of the, uh, the, the fractions? work even though it was zero? Absolutely, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, what he said was, if this was actually equal to zero, like if we had to subtract three from both sides first, could you still do it? And the answer is yeah. It's just you multiply by the LCD, 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 LCD still, but LCD times zero would still be zero. Do you get me? So yeah, it, it works, absolutely. It works every time. As long as you have an equation, just follow this process down, it'll work out great for you. So let's continue this. Since we have a fraction, we're going to get we're going to get rid of that using the LCD. What is the LCD in our case? Yeah, it's just that one. If there's only one denominator, that clearly has to be your LCD, right? So let's go ahead and use that. How many things am I multiplying by 2 here? Three. Good. So here, yes. 